Good afternoon, everyone. It's my very great honor to welcome you to this unique and special ceremony, this happy occasion, and say a few words about it. Ladan and James have asked me to thank you for coming, some of you from very long distances, to this special event. Since Ladan and James are both members of the Baha'i faith, they will be celebrating the marriage according to Baha'i law. And I've been asked to explain to you a little bit about what that entails. And since the Baha'i faith has no priests or clergy, I do not do this as a priest or anyone qualified to the task, simply as one of the guests that Ladan and James have invited to do this job for them. In the Baha'i faith, marriage has a very special significance. And Baha'is do not take marriage lightly. First and foremost, this is a spiritual relationship, which, if successful and united, will last for all eternity. The Baha'i sacred writings say, the true marriage of Baha'is is this, that husband and wife should be united both physically and spiritually, that they may ever improve the spiritual life of each other, and may enjoy everlasting unity throughout all the worlds of God. So, till death us do us part is not a Baha'i concept. This one runs and runs. Baha'i marriage is also a physical relationship and a friendship. A successful marriage should go a long way towards ensuring the health and happiness of the husband and the wife. In order to achieve a happy and permanent union, first of all, great care needs to be taken in approaching marriage in the right way. Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, describes marriage as a fortress for well-being. It's the normal and healthy state for adults, where feelings can be safely expressed in a spirit of love. And according to the Baha'i belief, the couple must be free to choose one another, and the parents have no right to interfere or to arrange a marriage. The couple, however, must become thoroughly acquainted with each other's characters, that the binding covenant between them may be a tie that will endure forever. Their purpose must be this, to become loving companions and comrades and at one with each other for time and eternity. When the couple have made the choice, they must then obtain their parents' approval before they can marry. This ensures that they will have the support of both the families, particularly helpful in times of trouble. It preserves the unity of the family and unity and harmony are the key notes of the Baha'i teachings. Parents can also help ensure that the couple's choice is the right one. The parents must do all they can to get to know the proposed partner well enough to see if the couple is suited. And the marriage is likely to be a success. And they must never refuse permission simply because of differences of, for instance, race or religion or background. Differences of race, religion and culture should never be a problem. Baha'is revere the founders of each of the world's religions and cherish the different cultures of the world. Unity in diversity is a keynote theme in the Baha'i faith and it gives beauty to a marriage and enriches the couple. This marriage today is essentially the coming together of two families, but it's also the coming together of East and West, Persian and English, and North and South. <laughs> the Baha'i marriage ceremony is very simple. All that is required is that the bride and groom recite in the presence of witnesses a verse. We will all verily abide by the will of God. And everything else in the program is left to the discretion of the couple, the choice of prayers, of readings, of music, however they wish to celebrate the marriage. So you will hear, uh, in the middle of the ceremony, James and Ladan reciting their vows. And that, in Baha'i law, means they officially become married. At the end, we'll be signing uh, certificates with the parents and witnesses, and I invite you to remain seated and quiet for that part of the ceremony. <coughs> Abiding by the will of God, this vow that they say, we will all verily abide by the will of God. Abiding by the will of God means that this couple will orient their lives to reflect the laws and teachings of God for this age. 
They must learn to live together in harmony and work together as a team. They should share their concerns and the events of their lives and always show affection to one another. The Baha'i teachings on the equality of men and women should be put into practice in the home. They must be absolutely faithful and loyal to each other, spiritually as well as physically. They should pray together, especially when they face problems or difficulties. And they should practice consultation, one of the most important laws of the Baha'i faith. When practiced in a spirit of prayer, solutions will be found much more easily. In short, this ceremony is just the beginning. Marriage, for Baha'is and for everyone, is something that requires daily work. Perfecting the relationship, developing virtues. Ultimately, it's an arena where spiritual qualities can be developed and children can be raised. I realized the other day, when I was thinking about this uh, ceremony, that I first met James 26 years ago. One of us had a lot more hair. <laughs> And uh, we've been friends for many years. Many of you have known James and Ladan longer than that. So it's a very special pleasure for us all to be here. And to wish both of them well in their life together. So now we will begin the marriage ceremony.